வணக்கம் In the series of Peri Puranam stories, the very first devotee, the great northern devotee of Lord Shiva, we are going to see a famous king named Manu Nidhi Chola. The Chola dynasty or the Chola empire is always rich in its grains because of the flow of Mother Kaveri river. It was always a fertile land with fields of paddy and even uh, sugar cane. Those things used to wear. In, uh, even the paddies will grow to that height. They will look like a sugar cane. And sugar canes will grow to that height of bamboos. So you can see the, how the fertile, the land was fertile naturally because of the river flow and there were in those days no chemicals were used unadulterated growth of paddy as well as uh, the uh, sugar cane and it's always it's a wonderful scene where the cuckoo birds will sing and to their tunes the beautiful peacocks dance to their tunes and also in all the temples the uh, Oduvar, the person who is designated for singing the Tevaram and other uh, Pannirithuru Murai, he will be singing and all the Bhaktas will listen and enjoy and some of them will just go in trance by listening to those songs. That is the atmosphere in which Shekhar describes the Chola Empire. In that Chola Empire, there was a wonderful city called Tiruvarur. We can call the Tiruvarur as the, the Tilakam or the, the forehead mark of Mother Earth. And then beautiful gardens and houses, peaceful atmosphere. What do you uh, need more than that? So the king Manunidhi Chola was ruling that entire area, living or making that as his Rajadhani or the capital city. Tiruvarur was his capital city. And then he was ruling in with such justice and dharmic dharma. And he will he was the the apple of the, his subjects as well as even prana, like uh, the life force behind his people. To that extent they adored him and respected him and so was the king was very much concerned about his subjects or people's his own citizens welfare so i that is what that is where uh, that is that's how he ruled and the, even the enemies were frightened to come enter into that empire and the friends of the kings they were always enjoying the company of the king and the uh, hospitality extended by the people. So, we can even say poverty was completely put in prison. You can, you can understand. Poverty was not seen at all in that dharmic area. So, that was the situation which was going on. And of course, he had a wonderful son who also followed the footsteps of his own father and his name is Vithi Vitanga. Vithi Vitangan as is, as is uh, said in Tamil, Vithi Vitangaha. So his name was Vithi Vitanga. He had a wonderful son and then uh, and he also became, we can even say that king's fame has taken the form of his own son and uh, the grace what the, the grace of Bhagavan became his life force. In that way we can describe that boy, the young prince was born and he also followed the footsteps of his father in worshipping Lord Shiva as, his, as their own Kula Devata. So that is, that is how and then he, he, were, he, he was born and raised and he, were, he grew up like a one uh, looking very handsome prince and every and 
not only the outward beauty inwardly also he had that what we call the respect for the people and even people also adored him because that the, the way he behaved with the subjects was admirable it was go very well going on the life was going on very smooth and very uh, peaceful but god always his own ways and he always thinks how long this devotees devotion can be kept inside lock and key people should know the whole world should know that he is a great bhakta of me great devotee of me so he decides that the time has come for him to show the entire world how deep the bhakti of manuridhi chora king so he decided to play a drama what was the drama this prince always he goes around in his chariot looks around for any problem that he could fix in his capacity or he will report to father and the ministers so that they will take care of it very small one i don't think there was a big problem in that kingdom but even then even small small things he will go and talk to the subjects and try to solve the problems like that one day he was going on a chariot so when whenever he starts outside they will always blow the conch and the trumpet and everything to announce the prince is going on his rounds that is the protocol so that day also it happened so he got onto the chariot and started driving the chariot around the main streets by god's will there was a calf it suddenly ran in the middle of the road where the chariot was moving fast and unfortunately this prince could not the control take the control of the chariot to stop at just one with the one brake or anything he could not do it unfortunately the chariot ran over the calf young calf and also enthusiastic calf who was running in good speed and this also the collision was very strong and the calf lay dead in that place and this boy who was raised not to harm anyone no ahimsa no non violence and he his body started to shake even though he was a great prince and warrior great person who can display his valor his body started to shake for doing this sin not with any bad intention but unfortunately it happened he was shaking in fear and he did not know how to report this to his own father he was so upset and he just start he came came down the chariot and fell near the calf and then he touched the body of the calf and in the meantime the mother cow ran to the place and she saw that her own child is lying dead on the street she started crying she started uh, shouting as though the child has to come back immediately but and prince did not know how to pacify that mother cow and he did not know how it happened in the first place so he was completely uh, completely uh, shaken and he condemns himself for such a great father dharmic father virtuous father i have become his son who has killed a life because i cannot create any life i can only kill a life i am going to bring i am going to tarnish the fame of my father manunidhi chola and i should not be his son at all how will how am i going to atone for this sin so that was the thought which was going on in his mind he immediately ran to the a brahmin who always gives what we call the parihara the atonement how to atone for these this kind of a sin so the cow was standing and he she did not know what to do and manuridhi chola and on the 
at the palace threshold the main gate of the palace he has hung a big bell we can call that as bell of dharma bell of justice bell of prudence whatever you want to call so the bell was hanging and whoever has any problem they can come and ring the bell and immediately the attention will be given to them and if the king is free king will, uh, king will come or minister somebody will come to attend why the bell was rung and it was hardly rung by anyone because people are happy there is no theft there is no corruption there is always prosperity there is always divinity in the kingdom so the bell was hardly ever rung but today the cow we all think that animals do not talk but they are very very sensitive they have their esp extra sensory perception so they will be able to understand the situation and the cow has observed that the king has a bell and she ran to the palace threshold or the gate and she started ringing the bell with her horn even the soldiers who were at the gate were stunned why does a cow after all a cow comes and rings the bell so king has never heard the bell for a long 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 time so he rushed to the gate and then the soldiers reported this cow was ringing the bell nobody else we were we were watching there was no human being around we were watching and she uh, ring rang the bell and she started crying that's all we see and then immediately king asked why the cow should come and ring the bell bell of justice okay and then immediately the already the news has reached the ministers that the prince had done some damage to the calf so the minister was slowly informing the king oh king prince was going on his rounds on the chariot unfortunately the calf ran in its enthusiasm and prince could not control the chariot it ran over ran over the calf and what happened the calf could not survive king became totally insane at that moment he said in my country how can this happen how can i atone my dharma is gone my justice is gone how can i live in this world and the uh, ministers were trying to pacify him and they said no the, the prince has already gone to the brahmin who gives the atonement so we can do some atonement for this but how can i console this mother cow tell me how can i console this mother cow she cannot talk but she pours out her feeling through her through the tears how can i console her in what way she could be consoled or i i made her i can make her understand don't worry you are uh, you are some some other calf i can bring for you how can i know what way i'm going to pacify her ministers had no reply he said and they were telling don't worry so many things like this have happened in our history and they all have done some atonement price chitta for this and the sin has been at moved removed he said no don't give me any consoling information i want to get rid of this uh, what we call the um uh, censure the censure or the unnecessary adharma which has taken place in my kingdom i cannot uh, think and uh, the, the, the they are the ministers knew the what is running in the mind of the king he said if the cow has lost her own child i should also go through the same papa if i experience that putra shoka or putri shoka whatever it is then i will know what the pain the cow has is go go is she is going through so i have to do this kind of the the ministers were taken aback how can a king think of killing his own son and he is the prince and he is the future king of this land how can he do that he said one of the ministers were called he said hey minister 
take the chariot, make my son lie on the place where the calf was killed, run the chariot over him. The minister said, no, I cannot do that. I am not here to do that. And if you insist, before he, even the king could give his look, it is, I am giving you the order, you have to uh, do that. The moment the eye, eyes turned towards the minister, he killed himself. He said, no, I am not going to do this adharmic thing. He killed himself. The minister killed himself that because he did not want to execute the order of the king, of the king killing the son. Then he said, but nobody is going to do it, I am going to do it. I thought there would be someone I can represent on my name. As a father, I may not be able to do that. That's why I asked the minister. But minister himself feels that it is not the correct way. I am going to do that. So he took his son, prince, the crown prince, to the place where the calf was killed. And he said, lie down on the road. And then he prayed to his Shiva. If this is your order, this is your the destiny through which I have to go through, I am doing it in the name of you. I have to prove that I even, even a, uh, an animal should not shed tears in my kingdom. That is, that is how you have told me to lead a life and you have told me to uh, 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 be the king. So, I don't want to go away from that dharmic path. I will do this in your name, in your dharmic way. So, even though I have only one son for my family, and then he said, the people around, they were all stunned and they were all shaking because he wanted to follow only the dharmic. The words are, Aravadir Sarvade Kadan. Going in the path of dharma is my duty. That is the only Taraka mantra. That, that was a mantra for him. And he said, he ran the chariot over his own son. Okay. Then, then it was a rare scene in the Kali Yuga. Okay. It was a very rare scene in the Kali Yuga. A king killing his own son just for the life of a calf. Okay, this has never happened and it will never happen in the future also because now what we see, they are all living for, we are all living for ourselves. Selfish nature. My family, my son, my grandson, my great grandson, it goes, the list goes on and on. But have you ever heard of a king killing his own son for the life of just a calf. The moment it happened, devas assembled in the heaven. The gods assembled in the heaven and they all threw flowers on the king. And then, immediately, Mahadeva, Shiva appeared in front of the king with his sench, like a moon on his thing and Karunya, the compassion in his eyes and then to his left is Parvati Devi, the Mata and the, all his devotees following him, he appeared in front of the king Manunidhi Choda and then he brought back the calf, the prince and the minister who killed himself for he could not obey the orders of the king. Everybody was brought back to life and then they all fell at the feet of Mahadeva, Parvati Sahita, Parvati along with Parvati, Mata and Pita Maheshwara and he blessed, after you rule, you pass on the kingdom and you will come to my Kailasa and live there happily. That is the boon he gave bestowed on Manuridhi Choda. So like the king, so are the subjects. If the king is dharmic, the subjects, the citizens, the people will also follow their own duty and they will do their duty to their best ability. If king fails, 
everything will go astray. It, it, it is very, very uh, clear what is happening around the world. If the head person is not clean, the people are also not going to be clean in their thought, word and deed. That is going, that is happening. Please, this is something out of the world story of uh, King Manuridi Chora. And immediately when the son was brought back to life, he embraced him tightly with love and affection. And the cow flowed her milk so that the calf could drink and become happy. And he, Bhagavan disappeared, Mahadeva disappeared. Sir, we will always ask, how come? How come a cow could ring the bell of, the bell of justice? Okay, because Shiva himself came in the form of cow to propagate the devotion and the prudence and the justful thought of Manunidhi Chora to the entire world. Okay, he himself came in the form of a cow and Yama, God of death, none other than God of death Yama came in the form of a calf. So, in that way, Ishan Pasuvagi, Yemanaru Kandragi, Visu Pugal, Arurin, Vidi Vandar Ammanai. That is a sloka, that is a poem written by Shekira. Ishwara himself became the cow and Yama became the calf. He wanted to show the, the great devotion of both the father Manunidhi Chora and son Viti Vidanga and the subjects and the people who lived in that dharmic time. Okay, And so in that way, the entire world was protected or world was uh, brought to show there was a king by name Manunidhi Chora and then in spite of ready to kill his own son okay and he luckily because of his dharmic nature he did not lose his son and he Bhagavan brought back the cow's calf also so that justice dharma nyaya and following the rules of and codification or the code of conduct code of law whatever you call you can give any name his name himself is Manu Niti. Manu Niti means whatever is ordained by the Manu in his book, Manu Dharma Shastra, he was an epitome or the embodiment of that code of law in the form of Manu Niti Chora. And then that uh, because the sun was also not going away from the Dharmic path, Yamadharma who came in the form of a calf, protected the life of the sun also. So, these things happen in the city of Tiruvaru, where great saints have lived and sung the praise of that huge temple, Jageshwara temple, Jagaraja temple, where Kamalambika resides, where Sri Muthuswami Dikshadar has composed Navavarana Kritis, singing the praise of that goddess. And that is the Kshetra. The, the saying goes, even if you are born in Tiruvarur, your mukti, your salvation is assured. To that sanctity of that uh, the sthalam or the place is like, because great people like Manuridhi Chora lived there. Even now, in the temple is there and there is a calf and a cow. Every, all the statues are there and statues of Manuridhi Chora is also there in the temple, in the Tiruvarur temple. Even now, those who want to visit, please visit the temple. And remember, our country had such great monarchs who sacrificed his or their own son for protecting the dharma. So, Manuridhi Choda is the first devotee in our 63 devotees list. So, we will continue with more stories of more devotees. Vanakam Nandri.